my shed. Hello and welcome. Thank you for clicking on my video. In this video, I'll be fitting a United 4x4 bull bar to my son's MN Triton. We start by removing the four plastic clips, securing the grill, and then the grill can be removed. Next is the headlight removal. Turns out you don't need to remove the headlights, but we were flying blind as the bar did not come with any fitting instructions. The front section of the inner guard on both sides of the car needs to be removed to access a single bolt securing the back of the headlight. The left and right flares are next, as they need to be cut to fit the new bar. A couple of bolts and some trim clips are all that are remaining to remove the flare. The nudge bar is next, and here's a tip, wear your safety glasses. Here is the new bar, as you can see it is very well packaged. This bar does not require you to cut your bumper. This bar is a complete bumper replacement. We were hoping to find some sort of instruction manual inside the package because we were flying completely blind. Inside the packaging, there was all the accessories required to fit the bar. On to unboxing the underbody protection package. Inside there was some quite substantial underbody protection plates. There are two bolts behind the number plate and then the bumper unclips from the fenders and can be removed. If your vehicle is fitted with fog lights, you can disconnect them now. The windscreen washer reservoir is the next to be removed as it is too large and hangs below the bar. A smaller, more compact washer bottle is supplied with the new kit. I 
I decided to put some tape along the bottom edge of the fenders to protect them from any knocks or bumps. The left and right bumper brackets need to be removed and so too does the impact bar. When removing the impact bar we discovered the intercooler had some damage. We decided to remove it and clean it while it was accessible. There was a slight film of oil on the engine intake side, but not too bad. I'm washing out the cooler with mineral turps as best I can. I flushed it through several times until the turps ran reasonably clear and then I left it to drain and dry. This is an extremely dirty job. Don't go wearing your Sunday best when doing this job. The intercoolers had an impact at some stage but it's still sound, there's no leaks or anything from putting the caro through it. So we're going to reuse it. Fitting the ball bar chassis mounting brackets is where we came across our first issue. The right hand side bracket or driver side here in Australia did not want to fit into position and was failing on the metal oil cooler hoses. With no instructions as a guide, I had no alternative but to ring the place of purchase for advice. And wait for them to get back to me. Turns out you have to trim the chassis rail slightly to allow the mounting to fit into position. 
Even after doing this, I still had to manipulate the ore cooler tubes to prevent them from rubbing on the mounting. And a bit of chassis black paint to protect the bare metal. Fitting the bracket still presented some challenges and manipulation of the oil pool lines to fit. Refitting the oil cooler was just a reverse of the removal. Next is the winch mounting plate that bolts between the two mounting brackets. Rolling my hydraulic motorcycle lift into position. This will help us support the bar while we fit the mounting bolts. The bar is a solid steel construction, easily weighing 30 kilos or approximately 60 pounds. Fitting the bar would have been awkward without the use of the hydraulic lift. We decided to leave the protective wrapping and plastic on the bar as long as possible to protect it from any damage while the fitting process was going on. We refitted the headlights to give us a reference point for the bar alignment. Like I mentioned earlier, we did not need to remove the headlights to fit the bar. Next is this metal trim piece that matches the profile of the grill and needs to be aligned appropriately. We decided to remove some more protective packaging as it was getting in our way. Next I fitted a rubber moulding. This moulding fits between the bar and the body of the car and fills in the gap nicely.
Up until this point, the bar has been fitted loosely on the mountings. Now with the aid of my hydraulic table and a spirit level, it's time to secure it in place. Now that the bull bar was buttoned up, it became apparent to me that there was no way to secure the bottom of the grill. I tried calling this supplier again for advice, but this time they didn't get back to me. There was this random bracket in the kit that I tried to make a fit, but it didn't want to work. Moving on to refitting the flares. This involved cutting the flares to match the new bar. To say I was nervous about this part of the job would be an understatement. I temporarily fitted the flare and then masked the area with painter's tape approximately where I needed to cut the flare. I didn't want to mess this up so I cut the guard long leaving plenty of green and then snuck up on it little bit by little bit until I had it just right. I found the multi-tool worked well for this job rather than a jigsaw although a hand tool like a hacksaw would have done just as well. It took multiple trips backwards and forwards to get this part of the job right. Same process with the right hand side.
I made sure to leave a small gap where the flare meets the bar for a rubber protection strip. Now it was time to start fitting the accessories. Since beginning this build, I'd had this burning question in the back of my mind, and that was where to fit the windscreen washer bottle. There seemed to be no room under the bonnet, so I had to go looking for other places to fit it. I had a notion that I might be able to use one of the old bumper brackets to mount the windscreen washer bottle up in behind the bull bar but I soon figured out that that wasn't going to work. Feeling defeated, I left it and moved on to something else. While Matt worked on the bar overriders, I started wiring up the indicators and fog lights. Poor Matt, he needed three elbows for this job. In hindsight, we should have fitted these before installing the bar. I found the indicator and park light wires behind the headlight and extended the wires down to reach the bull bar. The plug on the fog light loom was not going to match the new fog lights so it needed to be replaced with the one that came in the kit. I always like to cut the wires back from the plug a little bit, just in case I need to refit that plug one day. I solder my electrical connections. I only use crimp connectors if there's no other alternative. Is that Parker's? Yeah, and the indicator? That's right hand? Yeah. Thank you. Once the lights were hooked up, it was time for the underbody protection.
The bar seemed to be very well constructed and only time will tell if the paint is good enough to protect it from the environment. I do however have an issue with the stainless steel fixings on carbon steel. This causes a condition called galvanic corrosion. I'm no chemist, but this is a condition where the two different metals interact to cause corrosion. Again, only time will tell. Now came the part I'd been dreading, fitting the windscreen washer bottle. With the United 4x4 kit you need to delete the manufacturer's windscreen washer bottle that usually goes in here. And the replacement is a generic water bottle and there is absolutely nowhere to fit this inside the engine compartment. The only place I can see to fit it is here right beside the fuel filter behind the battery so I have to make some brackets up and extend the wiring and the tube to reach so just a little bit more inconvenience with this kit I found some mounting points on the firewall that would be suitable for the first bracket I made the brackets up out of some 1mm stainless that I had lying around. It took a lot of adjusting and manipulating to get this water bottle to fit in this small cavity. Height was a consideration as well. I didn't want it hitting the underside of the bonnet when it was closed. A leaflet with some basic instructions for this step would have been invaluable. Mounting the other bracket to the battery box was my only option. I will monitor it and if it seems to not be working I'll make another plan.
double checking the bottle didn't hit the underside of the bonnet and now it's time to extend the wiring and the tube. Matthew took care of the tube extension while I extended the wiring. We used a garden reticulation fitting for this, it seemed to work well. I routed the wiring in the tube along the inner guard behind the fuse box, ensuring that it wouldn't rub on anything. We filled the new bottle with the contents of the old bottle, as it had some product in it that we didn't want to waste. So there we have the windscreen washer bottle installed. Like I said, it's the only place it would fit. The only drawback is every time we need to change the fuel filter, we'll have to remove the windscreen washer bottle, but that's only every 40,000 kilometers, so it's not too bad. And it's only two bolts to remove it. Due to the lack of instructions, I'm not sure if this next step was a requirement or not, but I felt that not doing it left the job unfinished. I decided to replace the inner guard that would cover the cavity in the bull bar. My son likes to go off-road, so this would soon have filled up with mud. Of course, this meant more cutting. Not perfect, but at least it will offer some protection from the elements for the electrics in the bull bar. The last job was to mount the LED driving lights to the bull bar. I laid down some painter's tape so I could evenly set out the lights and mark position with a sharpie.
I'm just making doubly sure that these lights are in the right position before drilling the holes. The wiring for the driving lights was already installed so it was just a matter of positioning them and plugging them in. I blew away all the swarf from drilling the hole so it wouldn't cause any rust spots later on. I used a spirit level as a straight edge to make sure the lights were aligned. I did this several times while tightening them up. As the vehicle was already on level ground, I used the spirit level this time to make sure the lights weren't pointing up or down. Wow, hey. That looks shrink, dude. These spotties certainly light up the road. The last step, peel off the plastic. Well here we are, this job is finally finished. This bar is a very well made product, what you would expect being made in Australia. It took my son and I three days to install this bar and at a saving of $600 by doing it ourselves. If you like my content, then please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing and really helps this channel out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.